All right, so we are officially recording, and uh, uh, hopefully you are seeing me. If not, you're at least hearing me, and you have a chance to see Jess at the moment on the center. Of, she's on the center of my screen for some reason, but we're going to work with this new technology and be able to learn together. But I am super excited to bring the master series to you, and I'm excited that we can record this. It will have the video to go with it. I have the, the couple of tools I want to show you, and then we can come together as well. Um, and open it back up for questions and discussions at the end. But I love that we can have the visual yet mute out the background noise. If you need to stop your video for some reason, you should also be able to do that at the bottom. But what we're talking about this month and kicking off this master series, and I thank you for your enthusiasm and your excitement and your willingness to want to learn and to grow and to say, I know that, um, I, that I, even I would say, there are areas of my skincare party that I can improve. And while we're gonna talk about about lots of I think a little bit more meat behind why we do some of what we do we're gonna backtrack before we actually get to the party before we walk in the door and do some of those essentials of a great party we are going to backtrack a little bit because you have to be doing some things prior to that in order to set yourself up for success and really the first place that a party starts and the success in holding appointments on your books is on your calendar and on your date book. And having that mapped out and planned out. And I will tell you, some of you may have heard this before, some of you may not, but the year I went from, oh, I could work here, oh, I can get a babysitter here, and you know, I kind of was really like, oh yeah, let me schedule that appointment, then I'll call one of the grandmothers, they could probably keep the kids. The year I went from that mentality in my business to the mentality of I work Mondays, Thursdays, and Saturday, Saturday, like morning, afternoon, in my business, holding a face-to-face -face people appointments. The year that I made that decision, working my Monday nights really smart, having a Thursday night class or Thursday day appointments, and then working my Saturday. Um, I started that in July, and by December 31, my 1099 that we get from the company showed a $10,000 increase in my commissions alone from the company. So that was based on my commissions of, um, from the company as a sales director had that kind of increase. And so I don't even know what sales volume increase I had, but just the results I was seeing from the appointments I was holding allowed for that much increase over the year before. And I had only started at mid-year. So I'm gonna encourage you that take the time to plan and map out where and when you want to work and look ahead for the month um, or at least for the next two weeks. Um, Tammy even challenged us this weekend to maybe look ahead for our entire quarter um, and really looking at what works for you. Where are the places you can work so that when you choose to work, you know where you're working and what you want to fill in. And that is, is, is so important for you because it allows you to drive people to the places that work best for you and your family and you're communicating that to your family. And I'm not going to go over a weekly plan sheet um, and talk about that much, but again, I have gone back to starting with a really blank weekly plan sheet <laughs> and filling in my week so even though my calendar had my week on it this is allowing me to put the planning pieces on there and to, to go back and to do that and to know where and when I'm working what activities I'm doing on what day so if you want more information on that you can go to Mary Kay in touch go to the Silver Wings education section, and there's one that says making time work for you. It's right under the new consultant section. Um, and it's one of those simple tools that sometimes we walk away from. Uh, we just heard at the Fall Advance talking about fixed versus growth mindset. And sometimes we walk away from the things that are working for us. So I'm gonna encourage you to really think about that and to go back and to look at that and to consider that, that you want to be planning that out and to take that type of weekly plan, but also looking ahead for your entire month. Um, and one of the things when we do work to book people for parties and setting them up for that, key things is giving them a choice. When you go to the doctor's office or the hair salon, they're giving you a choice when you want to come back. If you're there in the afternoon, a lot of times they say, oh, afternoons work best for you. Um, or, you know, they'll just, you know, clarify morning or afternoon. You need to give people choices. Because when we say to our clients, well, what's good for you? We have created a confused mind, right? If I said to you, <laughs> hey, Jess, when's good for us to talk on the phone, right? You would be like, uh, I don't know. I need to look at my calendar. I have no idea. I don't know what to do. So when we say that to our clients, we're not doing any service to ourselves or to them. We're creating confusion in their mind. 
And so cross those words out. Don't ever use those words. It's not being inconsiderate to them by giving them choices. You're actually doing what professional businesses do. And so that's why we use that terminology and giving people choices. What's better for you during the week or on the weekend? And then once they narrow that down, great. Tuesday at seven or Thursday at six. Like again, just putting those pieces in, giving them what's available for you. Um, and one of the things that, again, just through recent training we've been talking about with a book that we've been reading as we look at time, so often when we have a goal for ourselves, maybe it's just a benchmark goal that we wanna reach. Uh, let's say we wanna confirm guests for the next event coming up and we confirm one guest. We feel like, oh my gosh, I've reached that benchmark. And we slow down and we stop the effort that we're putting into the work, right? But I'm going to encourage you, don't stop when you reach a benchmark. So if your goal is to say, you know, I want to have 10 parties this month, or I want to have five parties this month, and you put five on your books, we already know some will postpone. Don't stop at that benchmark, but it's natural human tendency to do that. And so the training that we're talking about is really talking about going for no. And to just continue to track the activity to get more yeses than what you want to see and being able to do that. So go for, you know, three confirmed guests at every appointment. And then when you have three confirmed guests, giving them the excitement um, of being able to set up for success. So when you have a guest coming to, a, to an event, um, instead of just taking that benchmark and being like, okay, I've got three people that are confirmed and then two people cancel an hour before and you have one that walks in the door if you're lucky, right? Have we all been there, right? <laughs> uh, I know that we've, we've had that. So, but what if you had three people confirmed and you said to them, I'm so excited that you're coming out with me um, to the, the you know, next girls night out event. And you know what? Most of my guests that love to join me bring three or four friends with them. What if you set that up to them? You're not even asking them to bring three or four friends, right? You're, you're really just saying to them, most of my guests that join me at an event bring three or four friends with them and truly make it a girl's night out. What do people like to do? They like to do what most people are doing, right? So if they, if, they, if they hear that terminology and they hear that wording, I love that that just gets them thinking like, well, most people bring three or four. Who could I bring? And who could I bring to really make it a girl's night out? And then maybe clarifying if they seem hesitant or, you know, when you follow up with them, they haven't invited anyone yet. Then being able to ask them, I say, well, do you have any questions about the event? Is there anything else I could answer for you about our pampering session that night so that you might, you know, want to, to gather a few friends to come with you? Maybe they're uncertain and they just need to know a little bit more information before they actually bring someone along. So don't hesitate to ask that question when you do do the follow-up with them. But if you heard me say there, I use some other new words rather than say, well, why don't you bring some friends? Why don't you gather a few friends to bring with you? Isn't there a different feel to that word gather a few friends than bring a few friends? Bring, bring to me seems like it's more work. When I'm going somewhere, I have to bring a, you know, a covered dish with me. You know what I mean? But if I can gather some goodies and bring them along or gather friends and come, right? It's different terminology. So that's some of what we're going to be digging into in this master series is the terminology and the words that we're using. So um, again, look at that as most, sharing with them, most that people that join me bring three, you know, gather or attend with three or four friends. Or I mean, you can, there you could say, you know, most people that come have three or four friends join them. There's the wording that we want. Um, and just being able to set that up. And wow, if you did that, three people, and they were each bringing three, you just turned that event into nine guests at that event. And I think so often we need to inspect what we expect. We, we reach that benchmark and we get comfortable. But if we would grow beyond the benchmark and go for, go for 10, if you went for 10 guests at every event, wow, what would that do for your business? How much more efficient would you be in the time that, we, you know, in the time that we're working? And me too, it's, it's really for all of us. 
And so some new terminology and new words there and setting up that expectation. And you're going to hear later on as we go through the training that that expectation will continue for your hostesses as well. Are we setting them up for the expectation of most of my hostesses have four to six or six to eight, you know, five to seven. You choose the number, but why not give them the six to eight, okay? Most hostesses have six to eight friends join with them. Um, how many, you know, would you like to have? And well, she's probably gonna say, well, I'm gonna go for six to eight. And say, great, well then you'll wanna invite at least 15 or 20, okay? And if they say, oh my gosh, I don't know that many people. I said, take some time, write down those names. I'll call you back tomorrow to see who's come to mind. Um, you know, I can, and you can even help brainstorm with her as you're doing that. But that's going to come a little bit later in some of the coaching. Uh, but again, setting up that expectation is key to our success. So the next piece after time is your contact list. And the average wedding into the America today has 100 to 150 families invited. That's 100 to 150 women in that session. And so I just want to encourage you, if you have not recently rewritten your contact list, to do it. To go through your Facebook, to go through profile cards count, to go through your phone, um, to go through, you know, the wedding list. Who would you invite? And sometimes it's, you know, Aunt, it's, you know, Aunt Susie that you don't know real well, but she's part of your family and she'd be invited to the wedding. Well, again, if we have not offered her a pampering session with Mary Kay, why not? We're missing out. If we'd invite her to our wedding, we should invite her to experience our business. Um, I talk about the example. If you were opening a brick and mortar store, you know, I know both of you like your coffee or your tea and different things. If you opened a coffee shop, okay, you would spend a hundred thousand dollars to open a coffee shop, to run it, to paint it, to get the equipment. You would spend so much money. We would tell everyone we know about that. Everyone. We'd mail it out in the community. Even we would do so much. See, this business is the same. Do you understand that, that we started with a $100 starter kit and whatever investment we made, but we have the opportunity to make hundreds of thousands and even millions in this business, but sometimes we just don't give it that credibility, and we really should. So anybody that would be on your wedding list, anyone that knows your name, knows your name do not prejudge and give them the opportunity, put them on that contact list. And then working in a place to have new leads coming in, um, ideally from your parties, but also out and about um, doing those things. And again, that's a whole other training. I am gonna send a little message out about uh, some of that. We did hear some of that just recently. But what I want you to think about as you're doing the booking, and some of you have been working with it, some of you have picked it up, maybe put it back aside and different things, but is that Power 21 Day, and that tracking of those multiple contacts. Okay, this is a new sheet I just started the other day. Um, and honestly, I spoke to one of them. Another one responded to my text message. And the two other ones I haven't heard from yet. So um, tomorrow is my day to follow up with them again. But again, sales statistics. And I can post this on our Facebook page again for you to see it. It shows it takes contacts four, five, and six to be able to see, we see a result. So again, in that go for no philosophy, don't see a lack of reply to your first contact as a no. But have we all been guilty of that, right? Seeing a lack of response um, that one time as a no. And it's really not. Life is busy. Oh my gosh, I had a team member text me on Monday. I totally missed her, team, her message. Um, and the, life happens. It happens. So know that it takes more than, than that contact and know that that's okay. Um, but, you know, as you, as you move forward and you can build those bookings on your date book, then ideally going forward, you're going to book her again from the time that you see her. So if you book somebody from a face, for a facial or a guest to an event, you make a connection with them. And that's what we're going to build on in this, in this master series is making more of that connection, not worrying so much about what we're saying or what we're doing or if we're doing it right, but listening to her and making that connection. And I'll be honest, it's an area of the training I have not passed along. But when people, I guess I just think people have seen me do it, they do it, or it comes naturally for people and they do it, but I'm learning it doesn't. So we're giving you that meat behind it. How do we build those relationships? What are the words we use? What are the questions we ask of our hostesses? And even our guests coming um, to a meeting. So if somebody's coming out and, and you know, it's a referral, we could get to know them a little bit more right, right on the phone and just being able to say, so, you know, Susie, I'm looking forward to treating you next Monday night. Tell me what's, what's bringing you out to the event. 
what's bringing me out for our girls' night out? Well, it's a gift from, you know, candy or it's, uh, gosh, it's girls' night out. I got three kids. I get out of the house. Oh, how old are your kids? You know, 10, 7, and 5. Oh, yeah, you need to be pampered. Um, well, I'm going to look forward to pampering you. Any other questions you have about our girls' night out and our pampering session? But asking her a little bit more and getting to know her a little bit more before she even walks in that door. You're building that heart connection with her. Um, and so when we do that, we are more likely to build those clients for life and get those guests through the door when we know what it is that might appeal to them. Um, you know, and sometimes they're just going to say it's free product. I mean, there could be lots of reasons why they say they would come to that pampering session, but asking that question, what, you know, what's inspiring you to talk with me today? We've done that with sharing, but you know, what's motivating you to come out with me on Monday night and getting to know her just a little bit more. But when you do see her, you know, our goal in that ideal Mary Kay world is get them on the date book, maybe using the 21 day power booking then see her at a facial, at a guest event, or maybe right away as a hostess, making that heart connection with her, and then booking the follow-up and having the chance to meet her friends. And so remember, and you know, again, Jess, you're a great example of that. You know, it was the power of one party. <laughs> it was one party watching your six friends come out, buy this product, rebook, and you decided that this business was going to be for you. Um, but again, just the power of that and the power of one session and what it can do. But they built that connection and they were willing to book with Missy until they even knew that you were starting and being able to have that connection. They made that connection that night to be able to see them. But the power of one, you had, you came as one, but brought six friends with you. So think about it. If you can just get, you know, the power of one and get that person to introduce you to five, those five then each know five more, and now you've met 25, right, as you book them for their follow-up. And um, ideally, along the process, you then want to share your business and, and team build and recruit. But ideally, in our Mary Kay world, a full circle party will be book, sell the product, rebook, and share our opportunity. And we will do that at each and every appointment that we do with no excuses to, ah, this ran late, I didn't get to do that. Ah, I didn't get to do that. But really being able to say, even if it's running long, five minutes, I just need five minutes to tell you a little bit more um, about my company, about my business so that you understand it. And also it gives me credit that I have done all the pieces of my business. It's part of my job to make sure I've shared it. What if you did that at every appointment? It's part of my job to make sure I just give a, a little summary of why I do this business, right? Doesn't that make it easier? Doesn't that give you some words to share with them as to why you would share what your business is, but helping you to be that full circle? So even if you need to, if you need to draw on the paper, you're taking notes and draw a, a circle and start at the top with your book, then to the right where the number three would be is your sell. The bottom is your rebook or just book again. And then um, to share. Okay. So just really can be SBS, book, share, book, sell, book, and share. That's the full circle that we want to gain from our business and being able to do it. But it also allows us to be working with purpose and with intent. Okay. And expectancy that every party we walk into, we will leave with bookings. And we will leave with that, you know, sharing a little bit about what we do. Um, and, and as we have different, I want to say, concerns or fears and doubts in our business, I want you to understand that sometimes those people at your parties do too, right? Sometimes people will not book with you because they don't want to fail. Make sense? They don't want to fail. Like if they, you know, if they take the deal, <laughs> you know, they take the deal and, and the party doesn't work out, they feel bad. They, they, you know, that doesn't work for them. So being able to say if you're playing deal or no deal or just talking about the checkup facial and encouraging them to have friends with you. And we're going to talk a little bit more about those details and give you, you know, really you, you a couple different ways as to how you create that next booking. And that's going to be in our future weeks training. But you being able to just let them know that you're going to partner with them, that you're going to be a business partner with them, help them to be successful. And that if they take it and they, you know, they take the deal and they try or they schedule the checkup and absolutely couldn't get anybody for that date, my goodness, we can easily reschedule, you know, um, and giving them that assurance if they need it. 
but to let them know, you know, to give them some security that you're going to be their business partner. And really the best thing you want to let them know is that you're going to partner with them for success. And if they will be willing to take the pieces that you share with them, that they can be successful and they can do that. But sometimes they don't want to book because they don't want to fail. Okay. So, um, as we look at this and we talk about things, when we do book them for that follow-up, again, just a couple of words that have come up and that I wanted to share. We already know the any reason why, right? Any reason why you wouldn't want to share your facial with friends when you've booked her. Any reason why you wouldn't want to share your facial with friends, right? Great way to ask that question. You know, that most women, you know, have three to four friends or at least two to three friends that sit around the table with them. Um, when I come to pamper them, because you all get to enjoy the pampering. It's a great, fun girl session. Any reason why you wouldn't like to share your session with friends or any reason why you wouldn't like to gather a few friends, okay? Different than have, um, and again, setting up that expectation of what most people already do, right? Already do. And so um, the, the next piece for today, um, in, and some of you may have just heard this, but I want to use this recording going forward and talking about that. Um, as we set this up and we do this, is really you want to book her, the, the proper booking approach is most often getting her on the date book, talking about, you know, treating her if she's a referral. Um, you know, a lot of times I want to book her and then I'm going to encourage her to share with friends. Um, I, the party's hard for them to understand, but for our existing clients, we can really share with them goals. And being able to let them know, uh, especially at different times, times like this when we've got this double credit, uh, we've got double credit happening. I get double credit for every face that I see towards year-long goals, um, top trips, diamond rings, whatever those pieces might be. We get the opportunity to have all of those things and to be able to, um, you know, get double credit this month. So being able to start with the party. Say, you're saying to you know Aunt Susie, hey, you know, Aunt Susie, I'm calling. I, I'm um, just calling to see if there's any reason why you couldn't help me out with a huge goal in my business. And she's gonna say, well, what do I need to do? I said, well, we gotta schedule a time to get together and have some uh, have some girl time. What um, what's typically better for you during the week or on the weekend? And she can you know again, I'm just going right into that question. I don't you know. She says, well, what do I need to do? We get some friends together, and it's um some girl time. What's better for you during the week or on the weekend? And go right into that question and being able to set her up for that. And ideally, you want to go through the hierarchy of getting her booked with friends as a party, um, as a guest at an event if she can't do a party, her own individual facial, an on-the-go appointment, a book show, social media show, or just mailing her some samples um, if you have to go through those things. And I'll, I'll be honest, I just did some Skype facials, mailed out the facial in a bag, and Skyped them to do the facial. Um, was really fun and a great way to connect with people. But remember, if they say no to one thing, you have to have that hierarchy of other things that you want to offer so that you don't get shut down, right? So we don't shut down. And think about what's in it for her. It's girl time. It's fun. It's fun time. Most of all, it's free products. And sometimes I don't think we emphasize that enough, that it really, really is free products. And I want you to think about, as you look at your business, and this is for um, you know, our little bit more seasoned consultants, but I want you to think about your business. Ideally, in this company, we want to see people multiple times a year. And yet, so often, we're not doing that. Okay. When we have new products coming out, it's a great reason to see them. Like run to your computer, order the new stuff, order a little pre-pack of a demo of everything. You've got a reason to book and to see people who are already on your client list and being able to say, I've got new products and I have a goal to have a hundred women share their feedback about these products this month. Is there any reason why I couldn't, you know, drop by and have you share your feedback? And again, most of my friends are, you know, most of my appointments are gathering, you know, a friend, a neighbor, a coworker. I could come at work time. Um, I could come over the lunch hour and bring it into lunch. Um, most people are doing it with a couple of girlfriends. <laughs> um, and then I get to give you some free rewards. Wouldn't you love free, right? Who doesn't love free? So if your mindset, you know, so far has not been a, to, to rebook those people, uh, here's some great words. And I just, you know, I think that we can be really honest with our clients and just say, you know what? I have found that I am not doing the best job of the customer service that I might like to do. And I've never booked you for your seasonal facial, your seasonal update. 
you've been using the products for over a year now. Um, and you've got, you know, fall, winter, spring, like your skin changes. And I apologize, I've never booked you for your seasonal update. So I was calling to see if there's any reason why we couldn't schedule that seasonal update. And you're almost giving them like a little bit of an apology. Like, you know, I really haven't done my job. <laughs> and it's okay to say that. I think they understand that. And that's like, a, it's a comfort. And then you say, you're going to have some people who will say no. But even just being able to say, and your feedback about our latest products that I bring to you that day is going to help me greatly with a huge goal that I have as well. Women love to be engaged in the goal and they do love to help you. So are you sharing that goal? Set that goal. 30 faces a month. In an, each and every month is the key to the business. It really is. And it's not as hard as we sometimes can make that to be. Um, and, uh, and just, it's really not. And we just have to realize and be encouraged that it's very doable, that we have that opportunity. But if we set that goal and we share that goal, I even 17 years in the business, I still will tell people I have a goal to have 50 women share their feedback this month. I share that each and every month. And it is how I get bookings in the urgency of the time um, that is available to us. And so those are um, your pieces on kind of the set up prior to and hopefully some new words and raising the expectation of some things as you set yourself up for success. And what we're gonna talk about going forward is coaching your hostesses. Um, and what does that really look like? Because that's where the relationship builds. And that's where it starts. And if we have booked the appointment, but we're not uh, watering that flower, you know, building her energy, encouraging her, we, we put work into the booking, but, but we are not working as much to maintain it. And so we're going to talk about coaching your hostesses. We're going to talk about the first five minutes of when we walk in that party. Um, and again, do you sometimes walk in feeling like a bag lady? <laughs> Well, let's cancel that. We're going to simplify some of that. We're going to look at the first five minutes um, of working with that. We're going to talk about kitchen coaching with your hostesses and really getting to know who's coming. And she's going to help identify for you your next hostesses. She's going to help identify who might be great as a team member. And then we're going to talk about the bookends of the party, the opening and the close of the party when you're around the table and integrated into all of that um, will be the relationship building. More of the words, more of the things to do, more of the questions to ask, and all of those things. Because if you can build great relationships, they are buying you. They're buying you, not just your product. They will stay with you for a lifetime. It is finding their need and filling it in any situation. If you can do that, you will meet their you, you will meet their need and you will you will build them as a client and I can tell you there have been times that a gal was looking at a roll bag and you know but had different concerns but what she really needed was a moisturizer and she she wanted to know that moisturizer was going to work for her that's ultimately what she wanted so guess what she went home with a moisturizer because that's what her best fit was that's what her need was but then again two weeks later at a follow up appointment she bought that roll bag because she wasn't sold something that she wasn't sure about and she didn't go home with, you know, have you ever called a client and they haven't used it yet? <laughs> I don't understand, like, like they just bought a product, how can they not use it? Well, sometimes they're not using it because they bought more than they wanted to and there was some, you know, who knows, there's different psychologies that go along with it. But the key to it is find their need and fill it and you will build clients for life. So we're gonna be talking about the words the relationship building um, and uh, just helping you to see how to be a business partner with your hostesses and how to really glean more information from them while also sharing more information with them as well. So I hope that these thought processes of inspecting what you expect, pushing through and don't stopping, don't stop when you reach the benchmark, but going for the 10 at every event, raising the expectation of your hostesses and your, um, your facials and telling them that most people love to have. Most people share their time with three to four friends. Any reason why you couldn't gather a few friends. And if finding a couple of those key statements that um, are beneficial to you as you get started um, in your business. And I'm going to give you, as we finish up today, I want to give you um, 
a couple of other really quick segue statements, okay? Just some other words that can be very, very helpful for you. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about how to incorporate these into the parties as you move forward. But there's, there's lots of different ways. You can use them in booking. Um, and so I want you to pay attention in the next week. How did you maybe figure out how to use these words? But they're segue words. And they sometimes allow it to be a little bit of an afterthought. Um, it, it, it's helping to take... Um, you know, she says, well, so an example would be you're booking her. You booked her for, you know, Thursday's event at three J's and you encourage her, like, could you gather a couple of friends and bring them with her? And she says, well, gosh, I don't, I don't know anybody that uses Mary Kay or I don't know who could come with me, you know, and things like that. And just say, well, you know, I've got a thought. Why, you know, who are the moms you see at the bus stop in the morning or your neighbors that are home with you or the girlfriends you always meet for coffee? Any reason why you couldn't gather a few of them? So it makes it real casual. And you know what? I've got a thought. And then you brainstorm with her on the places she could find people that might be available at 9.30 on Thursday morning. Other words, I have a great idea. Or, you know what? I have a great idea. Different inflection in the voice can mean a lot, right? Another I kind of, again, out of afterthought, oh, by the way, did I mention, if you do gather three or four friends, I'm gonna double or even triple the gift card that was given to you as a referral. By the way, did I mention? And the last one, I was, oh my goodness, I've got the best idea. Okay, this is one scenario I can think of. It's her birthday month. Oh my goodness, Deb, it's your birthday month. I've got the best idea. Why don't you make it girls' night out? Gather your friends for dinner or a beverage, and then join us for, for our pampering session at the Bad Orf on Thursday night, the 20th. Or, you know, you've got, uh, you know, we've got a great breast cancer event coming up. I know that you're always passionate, or you've got a team. You know, think about those people who are on a Relay for Life team um, or are involved in domestic violence programs or places and things like that and reach them out to them for the event coming up. You know what? I just had the best idea. Why don't you invite your team to our event, some pampering for them, some fun, um, just some girls' night together uh, while you're doing that, right? But the words, I've got the best idea. So I am excited to hear your feedback. If you uh, want to, if there's anything that stood out to you and you're able to unmute yourself, like I said, go to the bottom of your screen. I think you can unmute. I would love to hear takeaways. If it's easier to continue the conversation on Boxer or when I post the recording of this, you can let me know that as well. But any questions or any quick, quick takeaways? Hi, Jess. Any questions or takeaways? Um, Hi, Natalie. <laughs> uh, I will say, um, last night with my um, guest, um, she um, was uh, booked the party right away, and then I asked her um, about a sharing appointment, and she said it would be something uh, she would never consider or do because she doesn't like talking in front of people. Mm -hmm. And um, anytime, probably before, I would have been like, okay. But I was like, oh, you don't have to do it. Like, there's no obligation, just training for me. And she agreed. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. just um, not always giving up and just rewording the things sometimes. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Not letting the no stop us. No is not debilitating. And yet sometimes we allow that to happen. So congratulations to you for working full circle. That's exactly what you want to be doing. Thank you. Awesome. Britt, any takeaways for you? Anything you wanted to share quick? No, not that I can think of. I saw you writing some notes there, though. I love it. So um, some great, hopefully just some new words. And again, for you to realize that this is about having conversations with people. I've realized I'm one, I've always focused very much on scripts, which they are important. And there are certain ways to ask people that I'm also realizing that sometimes people are getting a little frozen by a script. And if they don't know it right, right, they don't say it at all. You know what? 
you just see the words that are on your heart. And if it's not the right thing, you're going to learn. We're going to learn together. We're going to learn by the next time. And you're going to say, oh, this time I want to say this. But it's about building that relationship and building that connection. And I'm excited that some of these words are just some new thoughts and new ways to do that. So I know that you're going to master these skills this week. Continue to put bookings onto your books. And we're going to look forward to a great, great month as we continue to master the skincare party. So I'll see you again next week. Thanks, ladies. Thank you. Thank you.